Hey, this is Margit and this is Screencasting 101. Just a quick demo on what it may look like. And here are our objectives for today. We'll start off by defining what screencasting is. We'll then move on and talk about how screencasting can be used, its application. We'll then go to apps and tools that are available for your use and a few tips and tricks on how to get started. And finally, you will have an opportunity to uh, try it out yourself. And here's our definition for screencasts. And I'm not going to read this uh, to you, but um, what a screencast is is best demonstrated by uh, showing you that I am in front of a screen right now and I am recording both what I'm writing as well as what I am saying. Now I don't have to necessarily write but especially when the kids use screencasting you will see a lot of that. So screencast is just simply recording what's on the screen along with an audio narration. We distinguish two different ways of screencasts in education. One are those that are teacher-centered or uh, teacher-created. The others are student-centered or student-created screencasts. We are going to talk about both of them in the next few slides. And we're moving on to applications and examples. Screencasts are generally used in two ways in education. One would be as a teacher-centered screencast, that is something that the teacher prepares. Uh, the other is a student-centered screencast, and that is something that the students would prepare. So let's uh, talk about teacher-centered screencasts. These are used for what is called blended learning. Uh, in blended learning, some of the instruction uh, is presented not by the teacher, but via a digital medium in this case, uh, a screencast. Uh, the purpose of those is to free up the teacher to work individually with students, with small groups, or maybe even with a um, whole class. And we see this used often in the flipped classroom where the kids uh, receive the instruction via a video, uh, but they do it for homework. Um, we use it to differentiate to remediate, and also uh, to provide self-paced lessons for students that uh, might be, um, might need a little bit more time to, to process, uh, that benefit from being able to stop the recording and to rewind. Uh, Teacher-centered screencasts are generally recorded mini-lessons and there should be no longer than one and a, one to one and a half minutes per grade. So in third grade, that would be like four to four and a half minutes max. Uh, keep in mind that even older kids uh, cannot keep their attention for any longer than seven minutes. So keeping it shorter is better. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, this example is uh, was recorded by Anna Okra for um, Maggie Ritter's classroom. And let's just take a look. Good morning. This week you will be doing sort 17, which is SH, CH, TH, and WH digraphs. Please write this down in your word study notebook. Here are your headers. Copy them down in this order from left to right in your word study notebook. SH, CH, WH, and TH. Once you have your headers copied in this order in your word study notebook, go ahead and sort your words. All right, kids, you can use this picture to check your sort. Um, make sure that you check each column and you can pause the video if you need more time. Here's another version of the sort that you can use to check yours. This version is the words instead of the pictures and you'll need to copy 
the correct words in your word study notebook in the correct columns. You can pause the video if you need more time. Now that you and your partner have your words copied, talk to each other. What do you think the rule is? What's the pattern? So as you can see here, uh, the students are uh, performing a word study. They're asked to talk to a partner as they, as they finish up their swords. Uh, so they're stepped through a uh, lesson that otherwise would be uh, done by a teacher. So let's talk about student-centered screencasts used to, for metacognitive and higher order thinking skills. Um, they could be used to allow students to explain concepts and explain their learning, um, as well as visualizing something they have read, or else uh, they could create content. They could, this could be a final product um, after they have done research on something. These screencasts allow uh, students to uh, bring in pictures, to bring in uh, material from other places. So this could be a good platform for a presentation. Um, in our example, uh, we are going to look at a third grade student. Um, and she is visualizing a book that she has read. So let's see. I read when I was young in the mountains. Um, I visualized um, the table of where they ate. And when they had okra, and I'll put a little plate of okra right here. And I guess I'll put little dots for the ochre. This isn't my best handwriting, but I'll I'm trying. And I guess I could just um I could draw <coughs> one little chair. So you can see how she is um, remembering the story uh, through its details and she's drawing the details that she remembers as she read the story. Okay, let's talk about apps and tools for the different devices. Uh, the preferred device really for screencasts is the iPad. Uh, because of uh, the ability to draw with your fingers. Uh, so for the iPad, uh, there is EduCreations, most of you have heard of. There is Show Me, which is very similar. Both of them are great tools for student screencasts, as well as teacher screencasts. And then there is Explain Everything, which is a little bit more complicated. I really don't recommend that for the students as much as maybe for a teacher screencast. Uh, for the PC, we have Screencast-O-Matic and Jing. Those are the big ones. And for the Chromebook, 
we have Screencastify and Snagit. Um, screener used to be available, is no longer available, and I want to just uh, throw that out, that some of these tools appear and disappear, and as they disappear, something new appears. So uh, generally, it's not a big loss because something new and better is available at that point. Okay, so let's talk about some tips and tricks uh, on getting started. Uh, when you get started on creating your own screencasts, I suggest that you storyboard what you want to say. Uh, that keeps you focused and um, makes it uh, makes the flow logical. You can storyboard either on a piece of paper and go from there, or you can create a, a PowerPoint and import that and use that as your storyboard to keep you um, focused. Second, I suggest a script, at least at first, uh, prevents you from going um and forgetting what you want to say. It's really not all that uh, easy uh, to do the screencast without the ums. And it also avoids you going off on tangents when you really shouldn't be. Last uh, tip for you is that I would say avoid distractions, and by distractions I mean visual distractions, as in having, you know, very stimulating little visual things going on on your screen that really don't uh, help explain what you're doing. So, so in order to avoid cognitive overload, uh, use visuals uh, wisely so they don't become distractions. Uh, if you're getting ready to have your students create a screencast, first tip, um, make sure that the students know the app, explain the controls, let them play with it, let them play around with the controls, um, and then second, give them an easy task that they can practice with. So first you let them play around so they can get comfortable with it, uh, and then you give them a really easy task that doesn't require too much thinking. Uh, and then third, uh, provide scaffolding. So once you uh, set them on their task, uh, provide scaffolding in the way in a way of, uh, let's say, uh, you want them to screencast the solution to a math problem. Let them work it out on a piece of paper first. Let them talk to a, a, another student about it before they're asked to screencast it. Now this is not something that needs to be done forever, but uh, until they get comfortable writing on the screen at the same time as they're talking, uh, I really strongly suge suggest that you provide that scaffolding help. Okay, and that was it for today. Thank you much for coming in and learning with me. I will send you some feedback and look forward to hearing um, from you about your experience. Have a wonderful day.